Hello there, my name is Dr. Laura Harris. I'm from Connecticut and I would like to take a few moments to share with you how you can use water to assist your body in its natural healing process. This is called hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy is the use of water in each of its three forms, a solid or ice, liquid or steam. I would like to share with you today one of the basic concepts of hydrotherapy and one of my go-to hydrotherapy treatments, a contrast bath. So when heat or cold is applied to the skin, it causes different reactions in your blood vessels. As you apply heat, either in the form of water or steam, or even a fomentation, it causes your blood vessels to dilate or expand. As this happens, blood is brought to the area, bringing nutrients and white blood cells and different things that your body needs for healing in that area. When you follow the heat by cold, the cold has the opposite effect on your blood cells, causing them to constrict. As they constrict, it forces blood away from the area, removing toxins and waste products with it. By repeating this process of adding hot and then cold over and over again, you create some sort of a pump as your blood vessels expand and constrict. And this increases circulation even long after your hydrotherapy treatment is over. And as we know from Spirit of Prophecy, Perfect health depends upon perfect circulation. So with that premise, what I have set up here is for a local contrast bath. This treatment can be done to a certain affected area, whether that be your hand, your arm, your foot, your leg, or it can be applied systemically to your whole body in the shower. But it's the same process. It's using hot and cold to cause your, your blood vessels to expand and constrict. Heat, when applied, also relaxes your muscles. And if you, if you were to try this treatment in the shower, you would be able to actually feel your blood vessels as they go through this change. And you should try this when you finish this meeting. So what I have here is a setup for something if I wanted to treat my hand or my arm. I personally sometimes have difficulties with my wrist in arthritis or carpal tunnel type symptoms. And so this is something that brings relief to me. So I have two basins here. One of them is going to be used for hot water and the other one is for cold. I also have a kettle. You can use a kettle, a pot, um, even an electric kettle. And you can set it on a burner to make it boil. And then as you're doing this treatment, your hot water basin is going to cool down. You wanna make sure to add enough hot water that it feels hot to your skin, but not enough to burn you. And then I have some an ice cube tray. You may want to add ice cubes to your cold basin either at the start of your treatment or as you, you go through it because the water might warm up. And then you have a towel to dry yourself when you're done. You can have a timer to time yourself and that's pretty much it. It's very simple. <laughs> so to start this treatment, the first thing you always want to remember to do is pray. We Know that God has given us natural remedies to use, but the healing does not come from the water itself. And you can use the story of Naaman as a reference. You can look that up after. God works through the water to bring healing as we have faith in his natural remedies. So always, always remember to pray before you start a treatment. Once you're ready to begin, you should have your hot basin filled with hot water. They're empty for now, we're just doing a dry run. But you would fill this up, probably about to here, with some hot water, and you would fill this one up with the cold. You begin by putting your, in this case, my hands, my arm, inside the basin, and I would start a timer for three minutes. Once three minutes are up, I remove my hands, and I will add it to the cold basin, and I would leave it in there for 30 seconds. That is our ratio, three minutes, 30 seconds. While you're in the cold basin, this is a good time to add hot water to your hot basin. Again, be careful that you don't make it so hot that it burns you, but hot enough that you can feel the contrast. As you go back to the hot for another three minutes, you may need to add some ice to your cold basin, but it's always best to do it when your hand's not in the water. So again, I would come back here for three minutes, and then I would go back to the cold for another 30 seconds. And I would repeat this change five times. At the end, you put your hand in the cold water for the last change at the end of your fifth time, and you make sure you do not go back into the hot water again. You always end a hydrotherapy treatment on cold, unless 
you have rheumatoid arthritis and you're treating that area, then sometimes it's better to end on hot. But outside of that, you end your treatment on cold. This helps to close your blood vessels and seal them off and prevent you from getting any chills or things like that. Afterwards, you can take your towel, you dry off the area that you treated, and you can go rest for a little bit. It's important to remember to rest after hydrotherapy treatment because as you rest, you're encouraging your body to continue the healing process that was begun with the water. Now, if you were to do this in the shower, it's the same concept. You would take the faucet and you would turn it back and forth between cold and hot, cold and hot. And again, you just do it to tolerance, whatever you can stand. But again, don't burn yourself. And I encourage you to try this to be able to feel how your, your blood vessels actually change. You can feel your skin tighten and relax. And you will feel very relaxed after the shower. In fact, it's actually recommended to end your daily shower on cold water because it helps boost your immune system and maintain its health, especially during cold and flu season so that you don't get sick. Now, again, to, to end your treatment, you finish on cold. It's important to remember just some little, some little notes. You don't want to do this treatment on an individual who has lack of sensation or the inability to feel in their extremities. This is particularly in cases of diabetes and neuropathy. If you are going to help somebody with this kind of treatment, you need a thermometer and you will test the temperature of the water to make sure it doesn't exceed 104 degrees in your hot water basin because since they're unable to detect temperature changes as well, you don't want to burn them. But outside of that, this is a relatively simple and easy treatment to do. And I pray that this has been informative and has been a blessing to you. And I pray that God continues to lead you as you seek to learn his natural remedies and share them with others. God bless.